Takia is one of Islam's religiously acceptable forms of deception. It involves lying to protect yourself or to protect the Muslim community. Historically, Takia has been much more important for Shia Muslims than for Sunni Muslims because Shias have been in the minority much more frequently than Sunnis. And in order to protect themselves from being persecuted or slaughtered by Sunnis, Shias often had to deny that they're Shias. The prevalence of taqiyya among Shias living in Sunni areas has led many Sunnis to conclude that Shias invented taqiyya, despite the fact that taqiyya is found in the Quran. For instance, in chapter 16, verse 106 of the Quran, Allah says that his wrath abides on any Muslim who decides to reject Islam unless the Muslim is forced to reject Islam while inwardly remaining a true believer. The verse reads, Whoso disbelieveth in Allah after his belief, save him who is forced thereto and whose heart is still content with faith, but whoso findeth ease in disbelief, on them is wrath from Allah. Theirs will be an awful doom. This verse was supposedly revealed after Muhammad's companion, Amr bin Yasser, cursed Muhammad and praised pagan gods while being tortured. Since Amr only cursed Muhammad because he was being tortured, he was forgiven. So, if you're a Muslim and you say, I reject Islam, and you mean it, you're in trouble. But if you're a Muslim and you say, I reject Islam, and you don't mean it, you're okay. Some Muslims insist that this is all there is to taqiyya. It's simply pretending to renounce your faith in order to protect your life. But taqiyya also involves pretending to be friendly towards non-Muslims, even though you hate them. In chapter 3, verse 28 of the Quran, we read, let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. Don't take unbelievers as friends unless it's to guard yourselves against them. Notice that this verse has nothing to do with pretending you're not a Muslim. It's about pretending to be friendly when you don't really want to be friendly. Let's read the most respected Muslim commentary in history on this verse. Tafsir of Ibn Kathir on chapter 3 verse 28 of the Quran. Allah prohibited his believing servants from becoming supporters of the disbelievers or to take them as comrades with whom they develop friendships rather than the believers. Allah warned against such behavior when he said, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way, meaning whoever commits this act that Allah has prohibited, then Allah will discard him. Allah will discard a Muslim who has a Jewish or Christian or pagan friend. But we've already seen that there is an exception. Ibn Kathir continues, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning except those believers who, in some areas or times, fear for their safety from the disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Abu Khari reported that Abu Ad-Darda said, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Abu Khari said that Al-Hassan said, Takiya is allowed until the day of resurrection. Abu Adarda, one of Muhammad's companions, said, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. That's how Muhammad's companions understood taqiyya. Why would Muslims need to pretend to be friendly? Because the Quran commands Muslims, fight those who do not believe in Allah, chapter 9, verse 29. Fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness, chapter 9, verse 123. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Chapter 48, verse 29. Muslims are commanded to violently subjugate non-Muslims. But sometimes Muslims aren't in a position to subjugate the unbelievers. What are they supposed to do then? Are they supposed to share their plans and say, we're not going to attack you now, but as soon as we get the chance, we're going to conquer your civilization, put your men to death, rape your wives, and enslave your children? Of course not. Countries wouldn't invite them in if they said that. So Allah commands them to pretend to be friendly, giving rise to the Islamic proverb, if you can't cut your enemy's hand, kiss it. Now, please don't misunderstand me when I explain what Islam teaches. When I tell you about Islam, I'm not telling you what your Muslim friends believe. So don't think that because Islam commands Muslims to violently subjugate unbelievers, but to pretend to be friendly when outnumbered, your Muslim friends must be lying to you when they say that Islam is a religion of peace. The average Muslim living in the West knows next to nothing about Islam and has been raised with the same values the rest of us were raised with. So when your Muslim friends tell you that Islam is peaceful, they probably believe it. Unfortunately, Islam isn't defined by peaceful westernized Muslims.
Islam is defined by Allah and Muhammad. And Allah and Muhammad say, fight the unbelievers unless you can't fight them. And if you can't fight them, deceive them so that they're completely off guard when it's time to fight them. We saw this in the Quran, and we saw it in Islam's most respected commentary on the Quran, which included quotations from Bukhari, Islam's most respected collector of ahadith, and two of Muhammad's companions. So anyone who tells you that Islam doesn't promote this kind of deception either has no clue what he's talking about, or he's practicing taqiyya.